Well, today is the day I am finally going to give you a tour of my garden at my new house out in Southern California, out in the desert. I have had so many requests, I mean, for months. Where's your garden tour? Where's your garden tour? You want to see what you're doing? And um, I just haven't made it on purpose because I, I've done videos for quite a few years, ever since I started gardening about six years ago out in Ohio. And I was like so spoiled. Everything I did worked in the beginning. I had no preconceived notions, no old patterns to break, nothing. I just learned winter sowing, started doing my seedlings and milk jugs, grew everything from seed and loved it. And it worked really well. And so I was spoiled. I lived in the woods. It was lush and green and very wet and free water and cool and, you know, the whole seasons and everything. And so when I moved out here, which I've loved, we've been here six months now, and I love it out here for a ton of reasons, but from a gardener's perspective, it has been so hard for me. I'm not kidding, I didn't even wanna tell you guys this, but I gotta be real with you, I always have to be real. I had a few days to maybe longer of thinking, I'm not gonna garden anymore while we live out here. It was so frustrating and so difficult and so challenging. And it gave me such compassion. I'm a very compassionate and empathetic person, but I have a lot of compassion for beginners. That's why I work with beginner gardeners. I so believe that everybody should grow their own organic food and how important it is. But I hit a whole new, new level. I was like a beginner on everything. And I, and I felt, some of you have seen my video that I made when I first gave a brief tour of how everything looked when I was in shell shock. I think it was back in January or February. Um, so make sure you click above. I'll have a link for you. To, it's kind of fun to watch. Um, what it looked like originally, but I was just shell-shocked. Um, it's nice that this house had about 10 beds out back already. Someone had already started them, but they didn't look like they'd been used in years. And we're gonna go outside, by the way. I'm only inside because it's a bazillion degrees and I sweat and my phone dies and I, can't, I squint and um, no trees, <laughs> it's very different. So I do the intro in here, but we're gonna go outside and see all my gardens, so hang on. It's gonna be a little bit longer today, but make sure you stay until the end, it'll be worth it. Um, where was I? So the beds are about six feet by 12 feet. And oh, some, some of them are smaller. They're like four by four, but they're done. But they, the soil is old. I mean, it's obviously completely nutritionless um, and there's no shade cloths. There's some old um, drip irrigation, but I'm not using it because I am on the search for drink safe drip irrigation. And we'll do videos on that because I don't think the drip ir irrigation is very safe for your son uh, to be on your uh, hoses with the water sitting in them and all the uh, plastics, uh, toxin pl plastics leaking out into our food. So we'll do a whole other video on that. So anyway, I'm on the search for that. Um, but right now I'm hand watering everything. So <sighs> we are going to show you where I'm at now. I got over my self-pity days of, oh, how hard this is. And I'm too whatever for this. I'm tired. You know, it was, it was just a big move and a lot of unpacking and cross country and everything. But I got over that and I've, I've, I've um, gone in full force with it. So my beds are about three quarters full and they're a mix of purchased seedlings because I couldn't wait to go uh, for my winter seedlings, uh, winter sowing seedlings to grow. So I went out and bought a bunch of big box stuff and I'll show you which ones. And there's some winter sowing out there and there's some greenhouse sown seedlings because I have this little teeny plastic, you know, $40 greenhouse that it really I love and all the seedlings grow really fast in there. Um, I tried some direct sowing, total bomb, total wash. I wasted packages of seeds of carrots and sugar snap peas, which for me in the past have grown like a dream. Well, none of them came up. I think I used three packets of seeds of carrots and I have two carrots in one bed and one carrot in another bed, which you'll see. And the sugar snap peas, you know, I'd put them in the little cups so the chipmunks wouldn't get the seedlings because they like the uh, sweet, soft, fluffy seedlings. But then it's just the seeds, when they grow, they're all soft and they dig them up and they eat them. Um, so I had little cups over all of them. So I had all these cups lined up. I'm ready to rock and roll. I have two sugar snap peas and you'll see those too. So I've had a lot of uh, bombs, you know, a lot of uh, things that just aren't working right because the climate is so different. And I haven't been able to rebuild all the soil because we're renting in this house. We had to really fly out uh, quickly and um, it was just too fast to, to buy a house. So we'll probably be here. <laughs> we said a year originally, but it might be two because I don't, I don't even want to start thinking about packing and moving yet. Um, but at some point when we move, then I'm going to recondition, you know, start with all new beds, all new compost, soil, everything. But I just don't want to put the money and the effort into doing that in a rental house. So that's kind of the backstory. And that's where I'm at today. I have two gardens. I have the one with the 10 beds, kind of down, we got an acre, um, down halfway down the yard. 
And then I wasn't going to do my growing tubs because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to get un shovel all the soil out and move them. And they're too hard to move in a year. And I wasn't going to do them. But I love waist-high gardening and my grow tubs so much. I got at least six of them out there now. And I'm starting my salad bar on the patio. So that's what I'm going to show you. We're going to walk out, see all the beds. I'm going to show you the plants I have going and uh, the state that they're all in. I'm already seed saving and it's only the end of June. So I'm seed saving quite a few plants that have, I've gone and I'm going to be rekindling and I'll be able to grow something all year round, but I don't know what yet. Oh, and did I mention I'm also doing, I did, yeah, I mentioned that I'm doing winter sowing too, but what I found out is I think I'm winter sowing in the exact opposite of what I should be. So we winter sow back in snow country in February, March, April into May. Well, that's when I winter sowed here and everything grew so slowly. I did get growth. I had 26 pots, and, and uh, but I had the worst failure rate so far. I had nine, nothing germinated at all. And then the rest germinated. Some were great, some were average, and some were pitiful. But what I realized is I was growing in winter sowing in too hot of a climate. It's not our winter. And so what I'm going to switch, and what a couple gardeners in the group have told me, is the best time to winter sow in the desert. Um, and yes, there's many reasons to winter sow in milk jugs in the desert, which other videos will co cover. Um, and it's going to be in fall. So I'll be winter sowing. I think it's going to be my biggest season, August, September, October. That's when I'm going to winter sow. So anyway, stay tuned. It's going to be fun. I got so much to tell you. I'm so glad to be back. And sorry I haven't um, winter sown. I got through my phase of giving. And I wasn't really going to give up, but I was discouraged. I was, it just felt like too much, you know, S starting all over again and learning the whole the other thing. But I did get totally over it and I'm totally excited now. So stay, stay tuned to the end. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel in case you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel and hit that little bell off to the side. Then you'll get a um, notification when I do more videos. Um, and I've also gotten into succulents and fruit trees and a whole bunch of other stuff too. So um, let's go out in the garden. Okay, let's dive in. I'm kind of going to give you an overview, a big picture view here of my raised beds. Now, as I said, these beds were all in there already. And the uh, PVC shade structures were already in there. And the string lattice work, it's all kind of degrading and just hanging there. Um, this stuff right here that was all in there but it's got to be at least three or four years old because it tears every time i pull it anyway i'm going to go through each bed and i'm not just going to give you these are my collars these are my tomatoes because that's kind of boring i'm going to tell you little stories and give you tips along the way so um and then at the end as i said stay on till the end because we're going to go up to my patio salad bar this is the first bed that i got into these look like they're about i don't know 12 or 14 feet uh by five or six and i started with this bed and then uh, with big big um, big box plants, back in January, that's when we moved here, early January, and I am in zone 9B, Southern California. Okay, moving from Ohio, for those of you that don't know me yet. First thing I put in with these collard plants, I never grew collards, and I've had kale, and they're kind of similar, but I thought I'd try them. This is only six plants, and I am not kidding. I have had plants, uh, had collard greens for six months because this is a July 1st right now, and they're still going strong. And they never got hit by the cabbage moth either. They did get some holes, as you can see, but I think those are slugs or snails. I'm not sure which, but I never got the cabbage moth, with, which was outstanding. It's because it was so dead out here. The soil was dead. Everything was dead. It had, I don't think they'd gardened in years. Um, so the bees did not know this is the place to be. And now we're having parties every day with the bees. And um, a lot more insects are coming too, unfortunately, the, the predatories. But either way, what I found is that collards are awesome for shading. And I've got strawberries under there. And I'm constantly going to be stopping and picking ants off me. There, I've never seen so many ants in my life. Um, but they're my pollinators out here too. I've got little plants. I've had all kinds of zucchinis and, and um, cucumbers that were eaten by rabbits completely. I've got the strawberries down in here and they have done outstandingly well. You'll see I got a little one. I've got a couple strawberries every day and they're just divine. Um, I have tomato plants stuck everywhere and you'll see like this one here it was just a growing tip of a big tomato and I stick them everywhere um, and they grow beautifully you don't have to root them you don't have to give rooting hormone nothing like that um, and so I was just I was very mishmash about how I put everything in I in the past before I was a gardener I would have been like this is my tomato bed this is my squash bed you know like everything separated but the whole like permaculture concept and a lot of other gardening concepts is well, you mix it together like it is in nature 
which is really good because I'm really, really liking it now that everything's mixed together for the most part. Because, for example, if this plant got hit by the cabbage the moth and the worm and all my collards were in one bed, I would have just wiped out my entire you know, collards. But if I put some here and some in another bed and spread things out and mix them up and hide them under each other, um, you get a lot better results. So these are my first tomatoes. These are big, big box store. I think that's a better boy. And I can't remember what that one is. And then a cherry tomato. Um, and I do have some basil in there that's going to seed that's kind of hidden back in there. And again, that shade kept the basil alive. See right there? That's all my basil seeds. Because I'm, I'm, I'm already, I've already saved seeds from several plants. The, two, the three tomato plants surrounding it, all three different varieties, did not get blight. Only that one right there. So it is not necessarily spread by contact. So I just left it alone and observed the whole thing. So I got, oh, look at all those beautiful tomatoes. This was my arugula that was a big box. One teeny $4.49 plant, organic, and it turned into this gorgeous plant. And I ate uh, arugula like crazy, and now it's gone to seed. So that one's fantastic. I'm going to pull that out, and I've got all these little baby arugulas. I'll never have to plant arugula again, even though I saved a bunch of seeds. And, it, and it'll just turn into constantly having arugula there. This is my butternut squash. Um, it's having the hardest time without sunshade. I'm going to have to get sunshade on this first. I've got a whole row of um, winter sown tomatoes back there that I'm staggering. Um, so they're smaller, and I'm hoping to get tomatoes all summer. So that's my first bed. Really excited about it. I really bond with my beds. And now let's look at the second one. This one, we've got a little shade. This is my t big tomato bed. And you'll notice, I mean, these are over six, six and a half feet tall right now, but very few tomatoes. Okay, these are shrimpos with lots of tomatoes. And what I'm finding is there's several things going on. The ones that set fruit before it got up in the hundreds are making fruit. This one had not set much fruit. It only had yellow uh, blossoms. And then we hit the hundreds and it's just not doing quite as well. There's that. And the fact that I planted them too closely, not imagining that they would have gotten this big because they were very small. But look at the size of those trunks. They're like tree trunks. So I do have tomatoes down here, but because I planted them too close, the bees can't find their way in. So that's another reason I don't have a lot of tomatoes. And lastly, it's so hot, it's in the hundreds now, some of the blossoms, and I've learned that, that this is what they do in the heat without shade, is they just dry up and die. Even if the bee gets to them, even if they're pollinated, they drop off and die. So I have a lot of good potential here. I am going to get the cloth up. I know I've been saying it, but I am. It's just, you know, tall climbing on ladders and a lot of work. Um, and I also have been kind of testing. I wanted my first year to figure out what needs shade cloth. Like, if 75% of my vegetables don't need it, I'm not going to put it up. And I've already got a lot of good answers. Uh, this whole season was like, just get food. Don't, you don't care how you get it, just get some food. Um, I'm going to do a whole video just on my pepper plants, but they've been extraordinary, even though they're small. And I'm going to uh, have a link right above here for this. And, it's, and I have a myth, a pepper myth, that I have busted, which is very common on the internet to see myths of peppers. But just let me give you a peek here. This teeny little pepper has eight, nine peppers on it. Look at the size of these. On a small little pepper, it's jam-packed. That one back there, I think, has 11. It's got purple, and I know my shade is not really good to see it, but I'm going to wait till sunset. And then I'll be able to get a better view for you. And I'm watch for that uh, pepper myth ex um, busted and my pepper tour on another video. Here's my lettuce that's all gone to seed. I actually waited a little too long and a lot of it fell on the ground where it will not grow because there's no nutrition. It's just granite, sand, and I don't know what else is in it, rock. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take all that out today planting more lettuce. Probably I'm going to do milk jug sowing on that indoors or under my patio because it's too hot to sow lettuce out here. But what I found is that lettuce is hard to germinate in the heat, but once you have it germinated, it's, it grows in the heat. And this, this lettuce was, I had lettuce every day for three and a half months from these little uh, six plants. It's all it is, is six lettuce plants, two romaine and four red leaf. So outstanding. Uh, got kale down in there. I've never grown kale in the ground because I've always grown ca uh, ca container kale. It's never been this big, so I'm really excited. I have three uh, kale plants in there. And then you see my zucchini explosion here. Now, mind you, I've been eating zucchini for uh, almost six weeks, almost two months, and I still have all of these. These were supposed to be yellow zucchini, but what I found is a lot of them are squash. 
and they have completely different skins than the yellow zucchini. Like this one here is a delicate skin. Even though it's big, it's delicate. It's a zucchini. This one back here, you can see it's oranger. It's tough skin. Even if I pick a little baby one like that, it's tougher. Like that's a zucchini right there. That is an oranger squash. But they still taste good. I just have to peel the skin off of that one. So this is filled with just four zucchini plants. And we have so many. I've eaten a lot of them smaller and tender, but I'll show you my other two other zucchini beds too. But um, so I'll tell you more about that as we get to them. And then all lastly along this one right here are cucumbers. And let me show you a couple of those. Look at this one. This is a Japanese cucumber. Let's see if I can get to it. I can't really get it out. It's kind of wedged down in there, really long. And I've got a whole bunch of them. You can see the rabbits have been scraping trying to get in. So we're ready to pick cucumbers, but they're vining really nicely there. And now this bed, I love them all like my children, but I love this bed. Remember I, told, uh, I, I mentioned uh, on another part of the video that I had composted uh, cantaloupe. Just throw, I, I don't compost and build compost. I just throw all the scraps right in the garden and bury them. Um, it's called uh, composting in situ or in place. So anyway, I got, I got all these in this other bed. I got all these cantaloupe seedlings. Um, just, just came out of nowhere and I had forgotten I even threw them in. So I transplanted them, a lot of them out of this bed into this bed. And that's what all of this, is, most of this is, is cantaloupe seeds, seedlings. Now I'm just starting to grow them up and vine them to catch this um, string trellis. But let me, I'm trying to look and that's why I'm being quiet here. I'm trying to look. There's a little cantaloupe baby right there. See her right there. And this is teeming with bees. I just watered a little bit ago, um, but it's just doing fantastic. So we have called the party forth and they're coming, but I can let them just go off into the ground. Like you're going to see my watermelons in a minute. Um, and I'm sure a lot of the vines will go to the ground, but I also know that the vines are very strong and I'm just going to work them all the way up this string trellis. So I'm very excited about that. Now I thought that I had all cantaloupes in here, but it turned out one of them was a cucumber. Um, the leaves look different right away and I thought, oh, that's strange. So anyway, you can see a nice, beautiful, well, you can't see it really. I got two giant, giant little fattos um, that need harvested today. Oh, and of course, I'm breaking off uh, tip, growing tips of tomatoes everywhere. So I have two tomato plants that have a lot of blossoms on there. So that one's doing well. This one, oh man. This one, I was doing carrots and sugar snap peas. Well, do you see any carrots and sugar snap peas in here? <laughs> like there's, remember I told you I got three of each or something like that? They all died. They, or they did not germinate. And it's just too hot here. And I even tried the cardboard method where it stays moist underneath. I got two sugar snap peas. There's one. Because the problem is not them growing, it's them germinating. I got another tomato and I just started putting my cruciferous in. These were winter sown. I got a red and a green cabbage, and there are my two carrots that made it out of three packs of seeds. Scarlet Nantes, there's the other one. I got more tomatoes there. Now these tomatoes, heirloom, are all winter sown. And these were so small, I thought for sure these will not grow. They are too small and scraggly looking. I'm talking, <laughs> they had been in the jugs months and they just would not germinate. And so they were no taller than this. I put them in like six of them all right close together and be darned if they're not growing and they're going to turn out fine. They got little flowers and they're going to be fine. And then I just put some brandy wines in a few days ago because I'm testing the waters to see how, you know, how long in the season I can get tomatoes and every, everything. And here are my only <laughs> beloved sugar snap peas. I could eat these every meal, every day. I love them so much. I have three so after I do this video, or four, I've been saving them all week to show you. Um, I'm going to eat those, have a little party. And I'm going to figure out, I'm going to go back to winter sowing in the jugs, in greenhouse sowing, and indoor sowing. Anything it takes to get those carrots and sugar snap peas to germinate, and then I'll bring them out. All right, check out my watermelon bed. This is one of my trophies. I'm so excited. I did... I, I didn't hand pollinate, and what I learned is I, d I need to do that out here, or at least I did at this time. I let Mother Nature do a thing, and I have eight watermelons. Look at the size of that. Let me show you my hand. Good size. There's another couple there. Over there, you can see I got two, and they're big. 
Not as big as they're going to get. Got another one there. And I got a mutant out there. I had another mutant over here. I don't know. Um, so I've decided to let this one grow out onto the ground and we just walk really carefully because I didn't know how many when I first did it. I've never had a watermelon bed before. I had no idea how many seedlings to put in here. And these were big box seedlings, same size bed. Um, so I had three here, one down there, and two here. That's it. Six seedlings for the entire bed. And I also have four strawberries in there and of course it's not one of my beds without a tomato I just stuck it in there a month ago and it's growing me tomatoes there so here's the mutant I don't know what I can't remember I got the signs down here of what they are their tags down here of what uh, variety they are I think I got black mountain and uh, sugar baby and then I know I have a no name it just said heirloom organic watermelon and it didn't have a name so I, I'm really pleased. I, I couldn't be happier. And what I'm going to do next, and I'll probably do a video on it, is I still am getting a few flowers. And because I don't know California growing, I don't know whether I could actually still have flower today and have a full-grown watermelon this season. I suspect I can. So I'm going to wait till I'm not getting any more flowers. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut all the vines off that don't have a watermelon. And then I'm going to cut all the vines past the watermelon. Like... For example, I'll trace the vine from the ground to that melon. And then if there's another length of vine going past it, I'll cut that off. So in essence, I'll have my eight or nine watermelons. Most of the vines will be gone. And then all the energy can just go towards the watermelon. So uh, I was so excited that I went and uh, from, from growing these and having the success and with the strawberries they got nice and hidden by the watermelon uh, leaves so that was nice I immediately went and winter sowed in the milk jugs a bunch more like a month ago and I just put these in a week ago so these are sugar babies I just have three and I'm trying to you know I'm trying not to I, I'm running out of bed space so I want to see if if three will take up a whole bed or if I'll put three in one end and three in the other um, you know, so either three to six in a bed this size, depending on whether you want to let the vines go over and you won't step on them and you don't have critters eating them, or if you want to just keep just those three, grow all the way down and have all your melons in the bed. So I'm still assessing that, but they winter so really great in the milk jugs. They do great in the greenhouse. I'm sold on it. And there was one more, hold on. Okay, that was a helicopter. It's gone. And now I'm on my last bed, and then we'll get up to my um, uh, salad bar up on my patio. This one is my newest bed. High volume of food. That's what I'm starting to see having my first raised beds, is I'm always assessing what's the highest amount of food I can get out of one bed. Like that one over there with the sugar snap peas and those little teeny tomatoes and two, two cabbage. I'm getting very low volume there. Um, the cantaloupes could be high volume, but this one's cranking. Okay, these were winter-sown, double-yield cucumbers. Six plants right there, okay, right along the end. They are starting to vine heavily into the garden, and I'm training them to go out of the garden because I don't see any signs that the animals are going to eat them. And let me just poke you down in here. I looked this morning. There were like six. I have no idea if you can see that. I don't think you can. But six or seven just in this one little spot right here. There's more of them. So the, in other words, they're doing really well. More ants on me. Um, so that's double yield. I've grown the double yields. For, I think this is my sixth year. And they really do have double yield. I'm going to sit down on my little wheelie thing here. Um, they, they're just filled with blossoms. Just all kinds of blossoms. Lots of bees. Very happy with that. So then I winter sowed more. Oh, let me go down to here and I'll end with the middle. More zucchinis. Look at this. These are, again, a combination of zucchinis and squash. They're like little blimps, just to give you a, an idea with my hand. <laughs> They're huge, um, but we'll eat every bit of them, whether I save them, freeze them, or use them, or just saute them and put them in soups. So then, I want to say, 10 days ago, or two weeks ago, I, I had winter sown more cucumbers and zucchinis and put them in cups because they were too small. And then they grew beautifully in the cups. And then I just took them out of the cups into here about 10 days ago. So these are all zucchinis. And then over there, those are all cucumbers. 
And then I have two little, I'm gonna step up here, watermelons that I winter sow. These are my, my precious moon and stars. You've seen my videos before. And look, even the leaves have little moons and stars on them. See the little yellow dots? The melons have moons and stars on the skin. And these do, they come in orange flesh and yellow flesh. So I'm hoping to get some cute, some two watermelons and roll them over the edge there. So I'm gonna get high, high volume of cucumbers, zucchinis, and watermelons out of this bed. So that's it for my beds down here and let's head up to the patio. Okay, here's just a far away view of our back of our house. That's my fig tree right there. I was given that with about eight leaves on it and it's doing nicely. Got a nice gazebo for shade and here's my succulents and then my salad bar up here. Let me just give you a look. I'll keep you teased a little bit about the succulents. I'm not gonna go through them, but all of these were gifts or cuttings. Most of them, they were cuttings and they're doing fantastic. Just little sprigs. And here are my growing tubs. Remember these babies? I missed my growing tubs because I'm tired of bending over and being on the ground all the time. Um, even though it's really good for the taller plants and the heavier plants. This is what I use up on the patio so I can be right by my back door, walk out, cut my food, and go back in the house. So I don't grow things like big watermelons or, you know, major cucumbers or all the big heavy stuff. I don't grow that up here. I grow all that down here. Anything I'm going to preserve or I need tons of it, I don't grow that up here. This is just what I'm going to eat. And when I have transplanted things into cups and they're still not ready to go in the ground, they live up here. This has only been growing for about two weeks. So let me start over here. My sugar snap peas. They turned out brilliantly until they were about a foot tall and then the sun hit them and fried them all. Um, they were excellent seeds. I only got a couple of them. They were these Ciro biodynamic seeds and they just grew. I thought, oh, I'm going to finally have good sugar snap peas, but the sun was just too much. I thought the house shade would do it, but it didn't. So after this video, I'm going to tear all of these out. I'm going to move them over to the shade. I got another table in the shade under the patio. So I got the roof there and I'm going to try and grow them there. And then I'm going to try and sprout them again. I, I'm just I'm definitely going to get more sugar snap peas. Celery. That celery has been there three months <laughs> and it, it will not grow. I mean, it, and I tasted a leaf and it's so bitter I had to spit it out. I don't know why I don't just pull it out, but um, it's too hot for celery. So I'm going to wait and it's going to be in my fall garden. I'm going to be sowing, uh, winter sowing a bunch of that soon. This is my Swiss chard. Can you see that okay? Uh, what was this? Winter sown or dirt? I, I lose track of all of it. I think these were winter sown too in the milk jugs. And this is my arugula row. Okay. I overseeded my basil on purpose in a milk jug. And I have taken out so many chunks of this, I can't tell you. And then it just keeps growing and keeps growing. And I just keep picking it off and putting more of it, which you'll see in a second on the other side. These are my pepper plants. I got my Jimmy Nardello category here. I got Long Island improved Brussels sprouts. I've got, what is that? Oh, Lacinato kale over there that all is winter sown and that'll be about 10 or 15 plants each and i'm just i haven't had time to take them out of cups and then put them and then put them in the ground uh more basil here are my, my cabbages red and green they're looking good and ready to go down in there a whole batch of peppers and a whole batch more of kale now here are the things i usually don't grow in my salad bar things like snap peas they were looking pitiful, the sun had burned them, and I didn't feel like just going down to the garden and doing 10 little snap peas. I mean, not snap peas, green beans. Um, so I just stuck them up here. I have no idea if they're going to do anything. Also, I wouldn't usually do cucumbers, but I had so many and I had no trellises, I decided to stick in, oh, maybe eight um, cucumber plants up here, and I'm gonna eat them as babies. Like I won't let them get to like full size because I don't know how big they'll even get. I've never grown cucumbers in growing tubs. That's about eight inches of soil. They might just grow all the way up the bamboo pole and I might get just as robust of a, a harvest as I do down in the ground. Um, so anyway, that's an experiment. Tomatoes, winter sown, they were no more than an inch and a half. Again, they were scragglers. So I put five in this pot, it's probably a 10 gallon pot. And of course they're doing great. No, no flowers yet, but I just put them in recently. More peppers, more cabbages, more uh, green beans. But here are the things that I put in my salad 
well, so far, you know, a lot of it goes in the salad. The basil, the Swiss chard, the arugula. There's all the basil. All of this basil came from that one pot that I overseeded. And I also decided to do peppers. Usually, peppers I would do down far away because they take so long. I like this garden to be things that are fast, quick. You cut them, you come again, you cut them, you come again. But the peppers are growing so well out here. And when you see my pepper video about the pepper explosion and the myth that got, I busted, um, you'll see how many peppers I'm getting. So I've got one, two, three more peppers here. And I'm probably going to fill this whole tub with next. To, I'm gonna, I have put the arugula here on purpose so it would grow over and, and trellis over there. I'll probably put two, four, six, eight pepper plants here. And I'm saving, once I get all these things transplanted, all these um, extra peppers and the cabbages. Once these are all out, the rest is going to be different lettuces. And I'm, I've got those growing right now. So let's see. I'll give you a last scan of the yard. I'm building trellises out there out of sticks. That's my other project. Absolutely loving being out here. I'm tan as can be and I'm not even trying. Um, I don't even get burned as much anymore. I try and stay covered as much as possible. But I love this patio garden. I love having salad right out the door. Oh, go down in the comment section. Let me know if you had a salad bar right up by the door. Not the heavy duty stuff, but, but you know, greens, herbs, things that grow fast and, and they just are abundant. Please give me some tips on what you would grow in your salad bar and that you would grow in these two by three foot growing tubs. I am going to load more. I wasn't going to because we're going to probably move in a year to two, two at the most. And I didn't want to load them and unload them you can't carry them with the soil in them um, but I love them so much I'm so at peace sitting up here not having to bend over having shade on my head and being in my waist high growing tub garden I'm going to probably put up a another six foot table here or two and put three more growing tubs I'll probably put six more growing tubs up here for my salad bar so anyway, thank you so much for being with me on this extremely long video. A thumbs up is always appreciated if you like what I'm doing. Go down in the comment section also and let me know, do you like the longer videos and tours like this? Do you like the smaller videos that are just, you know, four, five, six, seven minutes? Um, let me know what you like. And if you want to keep seeing this, what did you enjoy about it? And I am so happy to have you with me. Sending you much love from my patio garden, my desert garden, my raised beds, from my home to yours. Take care. Bye-bye.